morning and welcome to our service of worship at First China Methodist Church of Gatlinburg. We welcome all of you in the name and spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we'll need our hymnals for our call to worship and our hymn of praise. So you'll uh, join with me now, turning our hymnals to Psalm 113. You'll find that on page 834, 834 for our song, and then please remain standing for our hymn number 139. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the This time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun, we would say, The name of the Lord is to be your praise. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of God's people. God gives the very woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. We'll sing our praises now with hymn 139, Praise the Lord the Almighty. Thank you, Peg, for leading us. <coughs>
from Mark 12, 38 to 44. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. gospel lesson for us today, and uh, we want to hear it with, with open ears and open hearts, and I say that because, um, well, for several reasons, we always want the Holy Spirit to inspire our interpretation of Scripture, uh, but in this particular reading, we have an image of leaders in the temple. And uh, one of the foremost biblical scholars of our day in the English-speaking world and seminaries is Dr. Amy Jill Levine. Uh, Dr. Levine is a person of the Jewish faith. She's a um, very well-trained scholar in biblical history. And so as we... Um, those of us who have come through seminary or any of those who have studied with Dr. Levine or want to read her wonderful books about the New Testament, uh, we want to be aware of her emphasis on the fact that Christians need to be careful how we read texts about Jews mentioned in Scripture. And that uh, sometimes we are, well, those Pharisees, well, those Pharisees. And so what can happen is that we develop a prejudice against persons of the Jewish faith. And uh, that would be like if one Christian in the world made a mistake and so others thought all Christians were bad or unworthy or unfaithful because of the mistake of one or a few. And so uh, Dr. Levine warns us about that. So let's ask for God's um, guidance and understanding how we interpret scripture, stories from scripture, and how Jesus interacted with the Pharisees and the scribes, the people of power and prestige and um, a certain amount of wealth and certainly authority in the temple and in society in his day. And uh, so there are some in that text now, uh, whose behavior we do not want to emulate. And so uh, we always turn to Jesus to teach us, well, who is a good example that we should follow? And so we look to this woman who was widowed as the one who has the gift of generosity and the gift of faithfulness. Uh, so she is our teacher and exemplar today. Um, now the term poor widow really is a redundant one because all widows in Bible times were poor. Uh, you know, um, women were not what we call first class citizens, probably not even second class citizens, and certainly those who had been widowed uh, were considered very insignificant in the, that society at that time. And they did not have uh, homes on their own, possessions on their own, wealth of their own. They belonged to the men who married them. And if the, the husband died, then they were dependent on their sons to take care of them or take them into their homes. If there wasn't a son, then, then the person who was widowed could be just left out on the streets to beg. So Jesus is pointing to not just any woman, but to a woman who really had very little means. 
and yet she gave two small coins and Jesus <coughs> noticed and noted that this was all she had to live on. Well, in the world uh, today, census uh, data tells us that 245 million or so women are widowed worldwide. 245 million. And of the 245 million, perhaps uh, 115 million of those live in desperate poverty. Uh, now, in our, our society, our country, other countries in the world, there are social programs and perhaps churches and synagogues, other organizations that help persons that are, that are struggling financially. And um, even if we take the story outside of the context of, of widow, uh, widowhood, uh, we might think of persons who, who live on very meager means in order to get by each day. And so Jesus notices she's given everything she has to live on. She's given that to God. Now, a widow's might, uh, a might was uh, actually like 164th of a denarius. Remember the stories in the New Testament about a denarius? Um, 164th of a denarius. Now, a denarius was a day's wages. And so 164th of one day's wages wouldn't be uh, very much for anyone, but particularly for someone, and that was all she had. Uh, so Jesus is pointing to her generosity. But another gift that she gives to us as we hear her story today is to notice how faithful she is she is a generous person, but she's also faithful to God and trusting, trusting God with her last two coins. She's trusting God. And so her faith is a gift. Uh, I'm not sure I would let go of my last two coins. Now, that was a different time, a different culture, different economic system of sorts, but still poverty is poverty. And so I wanted us to hear today from one of our church leaders. If you are faithful in reading your monthly newsletter, you know that John Clayton, our finance committee chair, wrote a, a stewardship message for us. And uh, so I'd like to share just a portion of that. And John is uh, one of our online uh, worshiping community. And so we greet him this morning and thank him for his witness. So this is, this is what he wrote for, for our church this month. And he begins with the verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then these are John's words. It's hard to believe another Thanksgiving season is upon us. This is a time for reflecting on the countless blessings that are bestowed upon us by God, gifts that we seem to take for granted far too often. This year has been exceptionally challenging with the many disruptions to our lives due to the pandemic. Yet despite these challenges, God continues to be so faithful to us. And we need to respond to that faithfulness through our actions. As we give thanks to God for his many gifts, his mercy, his grace, may we demonstrate that thanksgiving through our thanks living. He gives us that word, thanks living. Thanks living lets God know we have confidence in him. Thanks living lets God know we have confidence in Him. Thank you, John, for that, that testimony. And so the woman in the story had a great amount of confidence in God, despite the way she might have been treated by those in authority over her in 
the temple community, and in society. So thanks be to God for those who are pure of heart, that keep their faith and their trust in God despite the odds. She might have had to accept her plight in life in that his moment in history. But with God's help and her faith in God, she was able to continue living each day in faith and fullness of God's gifts. So Jesus said she gave everything she had. I met a woman recently. She's a single person. I don't know whether I don't know her marital status, and, and that doesn't really matter. Uh, she's a woman working in this world on her own, and uh, she's a woman of some maturity of age. Uh, I don't know her exact age, but she's um, seen a few years. Uh, is a grandmother. And I met her recently when I, I was um, visiting. I make visits along the parkway some days. And uh, there's a new place of employment. I won't say which one, uh, just to protect her and, and, and that company. Um, but she had a smile on her face, and she was the hostess and was greeting customers very warmly. So I told her I was a local, and we started chatting. Well, she asked me about the parking situation downtown, and I said, I worked downtown. And she said she has a handicap sticker in her car, on her car, um, but that she had trouble finding a place to park and to get to work on time and without um, injuring herself or causing more pain because she does have some physical dis uh, disabilities. So she said, instead of paying the $20 parking fee, have you noticed the parking rates have gone up this year on the parkway in town? Instead of paying the $20 parking fee, she arrives for work two or three hours early so she can find a good place to park along River Road for free. And she said she just waits in her car and prays or listens to the radio until it's time to show up for beauty at work. So I talked with her about it and, you know, I remarked at the fact that she really wasn't complaining. She was just reporting to me what her life is like. And, and I, I had to really appreciate her ability to rise above her plight, you see. And so she would have to work more than one hour just to earn the amount of money to park her car for the day. That's a lot of extra hours per week, per month, per year. You have to work just to arrive at work, have a place to park, you see. And um, so it made me very grateful for my parking space. So I told her I would be praying for her and looking for solutions to her situation. And uh, so I invite you to pray for all the people in, in this world right now who are dealing with the rising cost of living, whether it's your parking space, your rent, your mortgage, your grocery bill, the gasoline you put in your car. The rising cost of living is becoming quite oppressive to people, and we're seeing more and more of our food run recipients being evicted from their weekly rental units because they cannot, can, they can no longer afford both rent and food. So uh, I'm praying for Miss Annie, Miss Annie, who works downtown. And then there was another woman I met who was widowed, and um, she was about retirement age and had worked um, uh, an hourly wage type of job, and her older brother had had to move in with her because of his uh, health issues and physical disabilities. And she told me uh, in the course of our conversation that 
she has to go to the pharmacy to get her brother's prescriptions. He's no longer able to drive, nor is he able to pay for his prescriptions. So she buys his medication for him. And I, I said, well, that's so generous of you. And, um, and she said, well, I, I can't afford my medicine any longer, but for me, it's a joy to pay for his because he's much worse off than I am. So she does without her own medication so her brother can have his heart medication. And so I, I, it was, uh, it was uh, when I was on a mission trip that I met this, this lady. So I was working with the agency that put us together to look into resources from that particular community to help her make ends meet. So many people in this world are accepting their plight in life and uh, with courage, with bravery, with grace, and with generosity towards others. Um, Brother Roger Tazay once said this about poverty. He said, the spirit of poverty does not consist in pursuing misery but in setting everything in the simple beauty of creation. The spirit of poverty is to live in the gladness of today. The spirit of poverty is to live in the gladness of today. And so the gift that the woman who was widowed shows us uh, is how to live with whatever life hands to us. Now the widow gives us another gift. If you look at that chapter uh, where Matt was reading, chapter 12 of Mark's Gospel. Do you remember how many chapters are in Mark's Gospel? It's the shortest Gospel. 14. There are 14 chapters in Mark's Gospel. We're towards the end of the 12th chapter. So we're getting very close in Mark's account of Jesus' life to the cross. This lesson about being in the temple and noticing the woman, encountering her in worship, occurs very close to Jesus' time of suffering. And so it is a foreshadowing for us to understand Jesus is talking about self-sacrifice, sacrificial giving. He doesn't say just she was generous. He says she gave everything she had. And so we know, so as post-resurrection people, Jesus has given everything, everything. Jesus has given everything so that all of us may have life and have abundant life in him. And that woman understood that gift that our faith gives to us, that we can find ways to share love and grace and thankfulness in spite of what life hands to us. So as we think about what coins or bills or checks we place in the offering plate, or what kind of time and talents we give to God's kingdom and to this church. May God reveal to us the way to go about it with graciousness and generosity, like the woman who was widowed. There was this other great woman, this saint, uh, Mother Teresa, we call her Saint Teresa, now she is who said, you must give what will cost you something. This is giving not just what you can live without, but what you can't live without or don't want to live without. Something you really like. Then your gift becomes a sacrifice which will have value before God. This sacrifice is what I call love.
in action. And so the widow shows us many gifts. She teaches us, doesn't she? But maybe most precious of all is that encounter with the widow. Her gift is to show us where the eyes of our Savior were pleased to dwell upon a faithful and generous servant. May God help us to understand his word from Holy Scripture. Amen. Can we continue our worship through our giving? I invite our worship forward as we prepare to present our time and offerings. <laughs> oh Lord, give us grateful and generous hearts because you are the source of every blessing in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity yet to give you our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. May all that we give to you be blessed for the work of your kingdom to reach those who need to experience the abundant life in Christ, you promise. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Are you going to share, share your good news? You want to I, I was just going to say hallelujah for some good reports on medical tests. Yes, amen. We've been praying for Andy for quite some time, and we, we rejoice with you. Give thanks to God. So thankful. And um, on our, our birthday calendar, we want to wish special birthday blessings for, for Patty Bush, of course, this week, and Nell Douglas. And Judy Bollinger and Billy Hancock. Any others um, that I overlook someone's birthday? Anybody that, or any traveling people for the birthday? Okay. All right. Then our prayerless. Oh, and I, I guess another joy. Uh, last Sunday, Aunt Connie mentioned Clark and K, uh, K King's news about the wedding of Hannah, their daughter, a beautiful wedding. So we rejoice with that happy, happy day, happy, beautiful day, beautiful occasion. Pray God's blessings on, on that young couple and celebrate with you. And the prayer list is before you, and I would like to add um, Rose Austin to the prayer list and um, for, for healing. She's having some tests now. And uh, Theo Edwards asked for prayers uh, also. And then Peggy mentioned an answered prayer. We, she had asked us to pray for her friends, Dennis and Cheryl, who had um, been struggling with cancer. And to Peggy, do you want to say? They're cancer-free. Wow. Both of them, Dennis and Cheryl. We give thanks to God. We, so we continue our we continue our prayers. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, you are the creator of the universe, king of the universe, creator of the sun and moon and stars, the mountains and rivers and the hills, the one who has made the beauty around us, the colorful leaves of autumn, we're so grateful for the sun shining upon us this day to remind us you are light and you sent your son to be the light of the world. You enlighten our lives with your love and your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, your support, your hope, your peace. And so we ask you that as followers of Christ, you would enable us to carry forth his light into this world wherever persons are experiencing darkness. There's so much darkness in our world and choices to be made where we can prevent some harm, but other events in life sin upon us seemingly. And so we ask for your help and your deliverance and your redemption. Make us to follow you faithfully and give us the strength and the courage to do so. We thank you for examples from Holy Scripture and from Jesus' encounters that we read about in Scripture. May they come alive for us today to continue to teach us and show you how your gaze is upon your world and each person living in it. So find us to be faithful in our willingness to follow closely Jesus' will and his example. We thank you he is our example in all our living. He is our healer. He is our companion. He is our savior. We give you thanks for all he means to us. We do pray for those on our prayer list and I would mention the Pulliam family. Many of us know Carol and Jeff Pulliam and Jonah. We pray God's mercy for them and the loss of, of their son, their brother Joseph. And any others who are grieving with us this day, we, we thank you for the comfort you provide and for the comfort and strength we find by being together in Christian worship. We thank you for those who are here today. We pray that you'll keep us safe. We continue to worry about the pandemic. We pray for those who are at home, 
still participating with us, looking for a good word of hope from you, or a message of peace, or comfort, or assurance, or encouragement. So we all pray together and join our hearts and voices with Christians around the world this day who are remembering the prayer of our Lord as we stay together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response allows us to sing our praise to our wonderful, gracious God. Now, thank we all our God is our hymn, number 102 in the hymnals. Thank you, Peg, for leading us. I invite you to stand as you're able to sing. Gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance.